Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Maisie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Welcome to part four of Secrets of Successful Rebooters. In this series, I share some of the success lessons that I've learned from clients of mine that I've worked with who are successful in different areas of their life. And for the most part, they have crushed it in their reboot and done very well. As a matter of fact, what's today? Saturday. Yesterday, I was having a meeting with the reboot strategists, and I ended up quoting a very successful client of mine. And and what I was talking about was, was speed. This particular client, he ended up building a very successful business in a short amount of time. Interestingly enough, he found me through the Porn Reboot podcast. And when I met him, he had just stopped living in his car. True story, he just started his own fitness coaching business. He grew it very fast. I watched him grow it, and he was struggling with the porn addiction as he did it. So I learned a lot from him, but he ended up selling that business for a couple of million dollars, ended up becoming an actor, becoming a real estate developer, and all this stuff happened in like a three-year period. It was something phenomenal to see, and he was he's, he's a young guy. He just turned 30 years old or 31 recently. And he's a guy I'm very, very proud of. We have lots of examples like this. But today I've got about six lessons that I've picked from my successful clients. And the first one is commitment. Commitment as a foundation. Now, I've mentioned this before. Personally, my definition of commitment is doing the thing you said you were going to do long after the emotion when you said you were going to do it has passed. And think about your life. How many times do you say you're going to do something in a burst of motivation or in a burst of of sadness, like you're angry and you swear, I'm never going to do this thing again. Yet when that emotion has passed, you're just like, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. I want you to understand that every time you do something like that, it's a habit. Your subconscious mind is keeping track of that. And you don't realize that the identity you are creating is the identity of a person who says they're going to do something. And they just don't do it. And many of you actually know people like that in your life. You know guys, you know girls, you know men, you know women. You know people who are always saying, like, I got you, man. I'm going to, like, we're going to do this. Da, 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 da. And you just, they just never, they never, they never come through with what they say they're going to do. If you are not sure, like, what you've been com- committed to in the past, if you're like, man, I don't, I can't even think in this moment, JK, of something that I actually committed to really. All you need to do, here's the trick, look at the results that you have or you have not produced. Like anything, any results you have, whether it is a home you live in, a relationship you have, control over your behavior, your physical fitness, just whatever it is that you committed to, look at the results that you have or you don't have. That's how you know whether you were committed to something, anything in your life that required work. What do you have right now as a result of those things that you started? Your commitment is self-created. And when you don't create your own commitment within yourself, you're not going to have any chance of succeeding. Commitment is simply, yes, I will, or no, I won't. And whatever the answer is, you're going to stick to that. And understand, brother, that whatever it is that you say Like what you say yes or no to, that determines the quality of your life. I'll say it again. What you choose to say yes to or you choose to say no to, especially when you're committing to these things, that determines the quality of your life. And what I noticed with all my successful clients is that they had a tendency to do more of the things which would make them stronger. So they would have a tendency to look at something and they would decide, is this going to make me better? Is this going to strengthen me? And sometimes the things you may commit to are things where there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of risk. You're like, man, there's a chance I might fail. But will I become stronger? 
That's the question that these successful individuals ask themselves. Those who are not successful never ask if this is going to make them stronger because all they see is the challenge. All they see is the work. So they're like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Have you heard people say, or have you heard yourself? Nah, that's too much commitment, man. Oh, you got to be so careful of that. Is it that it's too much commitment? If it's too much commitment, and that's the question you ask, is it too much commitment? Instead of asking, is it going to make me stronger? Brother, you might be keeping yourself stuck. That might be one of your major problems. So start asking yourself, am I committing to things which make me stronger? Or am I committing to things that actually make me weaker? And sometimes not making a commitment can make you much weaker. The second lesson is on integrity. Let's, let's do that on integrity because it is connected to, to commitment. When it comes to your performance, I, was, I just got off a call with one of our client success team members and we were talking about integrity. We were talking about being a high performer. And we were talking about what it actually takes to like complete tasks. Because right now at the time of this recording, it's about 7 p.m. And I have been nonstop for about 12 hours just working. And we were talking about tasks that had to be completed. And I told him we use a, a project management software for the company called Asana. And it shows everybody when you have a task to do and you haven't completed it. And I was explaining that. If you want to increase your personal and your professional performance and achieve results, then you need to have integrity. And integrity, the simple definition, is honoring your word once you've given it. Now, when you purposefully generate and maintain a high level of integrity, it is going to increase your power. It is going to increase your effectiveness. Anytime you see somebody or you find that, man, I am just struggling to produce the results, a lot of times you just need to strengthen your integrity. When a client shows up and says, man, I just can't, I, I've been trying, but I, I can't seem to X, Y, Z. I seem to always slip at this time of the week. Like I've stayed off my behavior for a long period of time, JK. But I notice that once a week, I always slip. It's an integrity issue. Oh, no, but it's a compulsive behavior issue. No, 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 no. If you've been in our program for a while, or if you're not in our program, and you've been working on your reboot for a long time, and you keep slipping for the same reason at the same time, and you show up and you say, you know what, I try, but no matter what, even if I'm to stop myself later on in the night, I still end up slipping, you need to strengthen your integrity, your integrity to your self-care, your integrity to your boundary, your integrity to the definition of your reboot. Now, lacking integrity, I want to make this clear. There's this thing where people think that, oh, because you lack integrity, you're a bad person. No, not necessarily. You're just a person who can't be counted on to follow his word. Not a bad person. It's just that people can't count on you. That's it. I've let people go from our company. I've told clients that, bro, you got to leave. And they're like, bro, why? I'm like, because you don't, you say you're going to do something and you never do it. Like, you're not a bad person. I don't think you're a bad person. I'm just looking at it very rationally. You lack integrity. You're not evil. You're not this. You're not that. Doesn't mean that, like, we can't be acquaintances. We can be acquaintances because I believe everybody can change but we're probably not going to be very close because the people that are around me, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it for them. The next success lesson I have is it's an important one. I'd, I'd love for you to really pay attention to this one. This is about momentum. This is about moving on when you feel that you have been stuck. It's also important because I'll be honest with y'all. I'm not perfect. Right now, I'm in a position in one or two areas in my life where I'm stuck and I can feel it. There's just this weird stagnation that's happening. In order for you to create momentum and propel yourself forward, not just move forward one step, like really go to the next level, then the things you desire must be much more significant than the things that you have right now. I'll say it again. The things you desire must be more significant than the things you have right now in your life. An example would be, 
In your life right now, you could be busy putting out a whole bunch of fires. There are some guys who are like, you know what, I want to I want to move forward in my career, or I want to start a business on the side, or I want to move to another state, whatever it may be, or I want to get married. But they are spending so much time dealing with the work they have to do right now. And they're like, oh, but I got to do this for my family. I got to do this. I got this bill to pay. I got to fix this and I got to fix that. The desired state, the place that you need to get to, you have to make it a must. M-U-S-T. If you are content with where you are right now, then that place that you need to get to will only be a should. You're like, yeah, I should get there. I have clients. I always correct a client at the end of our calls, let's say in the intensive program, we announce the projects that we're going to work on for the next week. And any time a brother says, ah, oh, you know what? I need to, I really need to, to see a therapist or I really need to go back to the gym or I really, I really should do this. I'm like, it's not going to happen. You say, I am going to harness commitments, harness integrity, harness momentum by making it a must. Human beings act on must. But when something should be done, what do we do? Look at all the things that should be done in your house, in your life. You ignore it. Make it a must. The next lesson is refuse to make yourself a victim. All my successful clients refuse to be victimized. It is not even, it's not even possible. In fact, one of the tells when somebody tries to get into our intensive program, there's an interview process, and we have some men who show up, and they try to act like what they're not. They try to act like, oh, I'm a successful businessman, I'm this, I'm this. One tell from actually successful people is that they are not victims. They never declare themselves to be victims. When they show up, and they're speaking to the reboot strategist, and they want to work with me directly... And they drop anything that implies that they're a victim. Uh -uh. I want to make it clear. Truly successful individuals that show up to work with us, even if they have lost like their relationship to the out-of-control behavior, they still are not acting like victims. Like their wife could be about to take half their shit or all their stuff, and they are not acting like a victim. They show up very not rational. They might still be quite emotional, but they show up ready to solve a problem. They are taking responsibility. That's the only reason they can end up talking to me in the first place. Not men who don't take responsibility will never get on the phone with me. They may listen, but until one is ready to take responsibility, they're not going to take action. Now, the victimizing thing, it's up to you. I'll say it again. If something happens to you, if somebody takes your money, if you get scammed, if you're a victim of, of let's say you, you invested money with an app somewhere and that app just shut down and they took all your money or bank or whatever it may be. Like today, I had to shut down one of my bank cards because somebody was trying to buy something from a fishing shop in Louisiana with it. And I haven't been to no fishing shop in, in Louisiana. Why are they trying to spend $420 20 in a hook and bait store? I'm not going to feel like a victim. Just like, cancel the card, let's move on. Whatever happens to you, it is your choice if you want to be a victim. And the position of a victim is entirely self-created. Here's the most important part. There is nothing worthwhile you can do when operating like a victim. Victim, victimhood, it's the most bitch-made position. You cannot do anything from that. Nothing. You're not going to be able to reboot. You're not going to be able to fix anything because you're throwing a pity party. This is why it's so important as part of your, of your evening routine when you're rebooting to ask yourself if you went through the day pitying yourself. Always go back through the day and go like, man, was there a time when I felt sorry for myself? When did I feel sorry for myself? Even if you slipped or relapsed that day, did you feel sorry for yourself? Well, make a decision that you're not going to the next time. The next lesson is a basic one, but not done often enough. Listen. Listen deeply and listen powerfully. My successful clients never talked over me. Never. In fact, sometimes on occasion, I'd be a little bit intimidated. 
because I know these are men who are used to having people listen to them. I know some of them are very powerful and influential. But then I came to learn something. All my truly successful clients listened. They never argued. They never brought up some. Never, never, ever, ever. Whether they were 80 years old, 60 years old, whether they were CEO of a billion dollar company, it didn't matter whether they were a celebrity, whether they were passed off a mega church, they always, they were listening. If they had something negative to say, they did not say it to my face. Yeah, probably they didn't have anything negative to say, I would hope, I'm thinking, but they stayed on as clients, so hey. Listen, the first question that somebody asks you it's almost never the real question that's on their mind. And I'm sharing this to you from a coach's perspective, what I've learned. I found that there's usually some secondary question that's kind of propped up behind the original one. And mastering listening skills is an essential component of living effectively. When you master listening skills, you can begin to master language skills. I'll say it again because the important thing is not the way my clients reacted for this particular lesson. The important thing is that when somebody asks you a question, that's not the real question. There's always something else. Speak powerfully. That's the next lesson that I learned from them. The quality of the language you use is often the make or break factor in a relationship. Do not give your word lightly. Mean what you say. When you are speaking to people, kind of notice the impact or the lack of impact that your speaking is actually having on them and adapt. I yelled at our clients. Today we had our dating reboot program. And I yelled at some of the guys because they, they just drone. Are you a droner? You just drone. Like you, there's no, no intonation in your voice. Oh, but, well, you know, I just had a really great day and I talked to that girl, you know, and it was just life was good. So, you know, and then yesterday, you know, I, I consider that a win. It's pretty good because when you think about it, the bill, nobody wants to fucking listen to you. There's no impact with how you're speaking. Get your ass to Toastmasters and learn how to speak in a way that is engaging. People will get the most benefit from concise, direct speech. Don't be stale. Don't be lame. Just open your mouth and speak and say something that's going to make a difference. You are a product of your speaking. My most successful clients listened. And when they spoke, they spoke. The reason why we are in part four of the success lessons I learned from them is because they spoke to me powerfully. They would listen. They would speak. You know, when they spoke, I took notes. Now, there were responses to me as I helped them end their out-of-control behavior, but there were little things that they would say. I was like, oh, man, that's a good one. I'm going to write that down. And they do the same. I actually had a client a couple of months ago. Uh, he was overseas. He was speaking as a big international organization, owns a big, I won't even say the type of company, but he was like, bro, I have to tell you this. He's like, I have to admit it because he's like, I went on stage in front of 2,000 people and I spoke and I said something. And then when I came down, he was like, you know, people were lining up to shake my hand and thank me for the speech. And he's like, I felt bad for a second. I was like, why? He's like, because the line that I shared, he was like, it was a JKism. It was something that JK said. So I wanted to thank you for it. And the funny thing was, I don't even remember what it was, but I'm appreciative that he did that. Actually, he's probably going to listen to the podcast. So I'm not going to put it. <laughs> he knows, he knows himself. Another lesson is, again, this sounds simple, but it, it bears repeating. Look for multiple perspectives. Be intentional. Like, and, and what I mean is be intentional about seeing what it is that you are not currently seeing. Every time there's a situation that you're just like, man, why is this, why is this such a conflict? Why do I feel off? Why is my intuition telling me that something is off? Take a moment to maybe put yourself in the shoes of the other person. Help other people do the same. If there's a voice in your head, a lot of us, when we deal with an out of control behavior, there's so much stuff in our head that is irrational. 
is so irrational. And we can go with this. We can jump to conclusions based on that. I'm always advising clients, take a moment and check in with yourself. We can be in the middle of a session and the session gets heated. We're doing going really, really deep. And I'm challenging and stretching their minds. I will pause and be like, yo, let's check in. Let's check in with ourselves. Is there a part of you that's experiencing doubts? Is there a part of you that thinks this is unrealistic? If it's a group session on Zoom, I'm like, look around. Are you starting to feel that maybe some of the guys here are more suited to learning this or they're, they're better, they're more capable than you at doing this exercise? Check in with yourself. What's going on? Then put yourself in, your, in their shoes. Remember, some of these guys may have come here in worse shape than you are. So we, we'll do little exercises that, like that, but keep training yourself to look at things from multiple perspectives. And I often hear that in the language of my successful clients, where they're like, you know what? When I looked at it from her perspective, I can see why she would feel that way because she came up in this family that didn't have this and didn't have that. Or when she was 16 years old, this thing happened to her. So you know what? I can see why she'd be defensive about that. I'm not bringing that up for them. They are doing that. And this is very consistent behavior in my successful clients. The next one is learning how to separate yourself from any sort of thought or idea that is, I'll call it disempowering. Again, you all know I'm not a fan of the word empowering, but I really have been using it more than I should. Anytime you find yourself having negative self-talk, but especially self-talk where you're talking yourself down or telling yourself how impossible it is to accomplish something, I want you to tell yourself, just become aware and say, you know what? Yep, now I'm doing it. Now I'm having that thought that stops me from X, Y, Z. Now I'm having that thought that stops me from believing I'm capable of being in a successful relationship. Now I'm having that thought that makes me think I'm going to live with this behavior forever. Now I'm having that thought that makes me think that my penis will never work again and I'll always be struggling with porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Now I'm having that thought that, oh, like quitting porn is going to be the worst thing ever and I'm never going to experience pleasure like this. Now I'm having that thought that I'm just an angry, irritable person and I'm always going to live like that. Separate yourself. Doing this will allow you to distinguish being an actual disempowering thought and actually having the thought. Understand that you can have a thought or you can be the thought. When you be the thought, when you are the thought, you start experiencing the emotions physically. They are stuck in your body. You clench your fist, or you tighten up your shoulders, or your jaw. You release cortisol. And guess what? Your nervous system identifies with it. You become an irritable guy. You become a fearful guy. It becomes your reality. But if you can separate yourself from it, then you realize, oh, I'm just having that. Now I'm having that thought. So important to separate yourself from that moment to moment. Now I'm having that thought that I'm going to be in trouble. Now I'm having that thought that this thing is going to be really hard. And when you start doing this and build this as a daily habit, well, you start operating from a place of more awareness. Instead of just having the things in your head, all the contents of your head and your mind, your thoughts, instead of having them run you. So I'm going to stop right there. That concludes part four of the Secrets of Successful Rebooters. I hope you found one of them relevant or helpful to you. We're going to continue with the series. I'm going to share everything that I actually have in my notes because I think it's selfish to keep them. And I also don't care whether you like this or not. <laughs> I hope some of you benefit from it, but if y'all are like, oh man, JK, this whole success, da -da -da -da, I don't care. I'm going to share everything I have in my notes. I decided in December that there's so much that I've learned through my reboots. There's so much I've learned from my clients. And frankly speaking, one generation from now, no one is going to give a fuck who I am. So you know what I'm going to do? I have nothing to, to hide. I'm going to just share just all the lessons that I have with you guys. If you like it, listen to it. If you don't, you can let it go, but I'm not keeping anything back. Now, obviously, I want to make it clear. There are some things that you cannot learn 
unless they are done repetitively. There are some things that you're not going to know whether they apply to you or how to implement them appropriately unless you're working with somebody directly. Those are the only situations wherein you should consider working with me directly. There are some things that might take a long time for you to figure out because you're busy gathering data and you want to get quicker results. I suggest you get on a call with one of our Reboot strategists and see if you're a good fit for one of our programs. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out-of-control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is, if you're not sure where to start but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.